Hello, and welcome to 4 Accelerator. I'm your host, Stratagost, and today I'm going to show you how to beat Deity. My plan with the series is to take people who are familiar with the game, who have played it before, uh, know about the, the general mechanics, uh, but have never beaten Deity, and to try to teach them how to beat Deity, uh, improving their game a little bit at a time. Now, my philosophy is that the best way to do this is, by learn, is to learn by doing, and uh, in this case, it's going to be learned by watching and hearing. So I'm going to start up a single-player game and uh, just roll with the punches and show you how I go about playing Deity difficulty. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is we need to pick our leader. Now, beginners often ask who they should play to learn the game, and I always suggest uh, Trajan as Rome. And the reason for this is that his uh, unique bonuses, which we'll cover in a little bit, are fairly automatic, fairly simple, um, easy to learn, and easy to uh, use. Um, so I'll, I'll start with Trajan, and uh, I'll set this to Deity defi Difficulty. We'll do a standard speed, we'll do continents, we'll do everything standard. Um, I'll leave the Disaster Intensity at 2, because that's a standard setup as well. If we go into the Advanced Setup, what I like to do is I like to uh, have some random leaders, but also some what I call rivals. So for uh, Rome, we definitely want a rival in Dido leading Phoenicia and leading Carthage. Uh, this is because, historically, uh, obviously the Carthaginians were uh, rivals to the Romans, uh, they had several Punic Wars, and uh, Dido is also part of Virgil's Aeneid, um, and so has ties to Rome. Uh, mechanically, uh, with Trajan, the goal is going to be to settle a lot of cities, and uh, Dido also has advantages to settling cities and incentives to settle, uh, settle cities. Uh, so, not only historically, but also mechanically, Dido is going to be something of a rival to Trajan. Um, I also want to add in Cleopatra, again, historically, because of some rivalries between Rome and Egypt, and specifically Cleopatra as the last um, non-Roman ruler of Egypt. And again, mechanically, uh, Rome has a very early military advantage in the form of their legion, Cleopatra similarly has a an early advantage um, in terms of building districts and wonders, but also in terms of her Marianu chariot archer, which is quite strong, quite early. Um, so these two are going to give us a run for our money. The rest I'm just going to leave random and uh, and show you how to deal with the randomness in the game. We don't know who we're going to get there, um, and then everything else is just the standard settings. Uh, so why don't we start up a game? So, first things first, let's have a look at our abilities. So this is Trajan leading Rome. His first ability is Trajan's Column. All cities start with an additional city center building, starts with the monument building in the ancient era. That is, when you start the game in the ancient era, all the cities you found will begin with a monument building. If you start the game in later eras, you'll get different buildings because uh, you'll also get a monument and other buildings automatically when you start in later eras. Uh, this is a great ability especially in the early game. It means we're going to start with more culture than we otherwise would and more culture than most other civs would. Um, and it's going to be useful for, throughout the game. It also incentivizes us to build a lot of cities uh, because every time we settle a city, we're going to get more culture, more monuments, and those are all good things. The second ability is all roads lead to Rome. All cities you found or conquer start with a trading post. If in trade route range of your capital, they also start with a road to it. Your trade routes earn plus one gold for passing through trading posts in your own cities. This too is a great ability, and it's uh, fairly automatic, just like the uh, Trajan's Column ability. Uh, trading posts are useful for extending your trade routes out to other places. Um, it's useful to have roads between your cities because you can move units more quickly, and this will just give you automatic roads, so you don't even have to move your trade routes around to try to generate roads. It just makes it very simple. And then the plus one gold for passing through trade posts works well with the, f the free trading posts, which usually you get by completing a trade route with the city. This will just give you trade routes all over the place. And this also incentivizes you to send trade routes across your empire um, through all the trading posts you can. And uh, since it's in your own cities, uh, it also incentivizes you to trade internally. Now, internal trade routes are pretty good. They give you food and production. So they, they let you um, especially use trade routes to um, either make a single city or a few cities that have a very high production and, and high population with the food, um, or uh, they're useful for making your newer cities much better, much faster. 
And in this case, the plus one gold to uh, trade routes passing through trading posts um, is also quite good because internal trade routes don't usually have gold. Um, they're usually just focused on food and production. But in this case, you'll be getting gold as well. Gold is super useful, especially uh, to have a bigger military. And uh, so this is just a nice, easy bonus to work with. And the internal trade routes are also going to be good for um, military and, and domination victories in particular. Um, just because if you're attacking a lot of people, you obviously don't want to have external trade routes um, that can be plundered. It's, it's much safer if they're internal. Um, so these are going to be useful abilities. Their unique unit is the Legion. It's a Roman unique classical era melee unit that replaces the Swordsman in uh, ironworking tech in the classical era, and it can build a Roman fort. So this is just a stronger Swordsman. Um, it's going to be useful in the early game. Uh, we might be able to conquer our neighbor using the Legion, and the Roman fort is just a, a nice little bonus. Uh, it means that you can use your Legions to remove features using that charge instead of building a Roman fort. You can also just repair things, which is useful um, on the on the warpath because you can pillage something and then repair it as soon as you take back or take that city, um, which just lets you get conquered cities up and running much faster. Uh, the Roman fort is also good. It, it just acts as a normal fort, uh, but is available much earlier. And uh, the legions come with a single charge, but if you get them in a spot where you, you need some instant uh, defense strength or combat strength on the tile that they're on, you can just pop down a Roman fort, um, which is very useful uh, for defending. Again, very useful for domination type victories. Uh, their unique infrastructure is the Bath. This is a district you know, unique to Rome for city growth. It replaces the aqueduct district and cheaper to build. Uh, most of this Bath description is going to be uh, standard for the aqueduct, uh, and then when we get to uh, the bottom, we'll actually see the uh, the extra bath bonus. So a normal aqueduct provides the city with a source of fresh water from an adjacent river, lake, oasis, or mountain. Cities that do not yet have existing fresh water receive up to six housing. Cities that already have existing fresh water will instead get plus two housing. If built adjacent to a geothermal fissure, plus one amenity. Now this is the, the part that's specific to the bath. In all cases, the bath provides an additional bonus of plus two housing and plus one amenity. Uh, it also provides, again, aqueducts always do this. They pre prevent food loss during drought. Um, they must be built adjacent to the city center. Mil military engineers can spend a charge to complete 20% of a bath's production. So aqueducts are pretty good, especially if you can't settle your city on a river or on a lake, or uh, but you can settle them within a, a single tile of a river or a lake or an oasis or a mountain. Uh, it just gives you a lot of flexibility. And because we want to settle... Uh, everywhere we can. This is this is going to be a very helpful boost, and the bath also builds in half the time as a normal aqueduct, so that's another great advantage. Uh, the plus two housing is good. We can make bigger cities that way. Housing is a cap on your population, and the plus one amenity is great as well, especially if we're going for a domination game. It helps to have lots of amenities to prevent war weariness, and thus prevent losses of loyalty. Uh, another great feature of aqueducts in general um, that's just improved by having an improved aqueduct is that uh, industrial zones get plus two adjacency bonus for each aqueduct. They also get the same adjacency bonus for dams and canals, um, in addition to counting as one district for plus one adjacency bonus for every two districts. That's standard. Uh, so... Rome gets to use these aqueducts, use these baths everywhere, and also then gets a, an opportunity to have stronger industrial zones. So where all these lead, uh, they're kind of flexible. They can lead in lots of different directions. But uh, without looking at the map yet, I think we're probably going to try to go for a science slash domination victory. Uh, these two victory types uh, tend to mesh well with each other. You can tend to try to go for one, um, and maybe do the other one along the way, uh, or shoot for one, and if it doesn't work out, you can switch pivot to the other one. That's because when you go domination, you want a scientific advantage because all or almost all of the units are on the science tree, and the, the key to winning battles is to be ahead of your enemy on uh, the strength of military units. So... When you go domination, you want to go science. And when you're going science, you'll also be stronger and then can go for some domination. So I think the plan will probably be to focus on science and conquering 
Um, we don't know which of those will come first. Either we'll conquer everybody and win with domination, or maybe we'll conquer one or two civs and then focus on science. Uh, science victory is also probably one of the... Well, domination is probably the, the easiest uh, to win on, de on deity difficulty because uh, once you start snowballing with domination, uh, you start getting so much extra science and culture and money and so on from all of the cities that you're conquering. And uh, you also get these promoted units, which are very powerful, um, that it becomes easier with each sieve you conquer to conquer other sieves. Um, but science is also a pretty good, pretty easy uh, victory to win on deity. And that's because um, all of the other victory types are competitive. Uh, you have to conquer every city or convert every or convert half of the cities. Sorry, you, uh, for domination, you have to conquer every capital. Uh, for religious victory, you have to convert half of all the cities in the in the world. And with culture, you have to get more tourism than uh, every other civ has defensive culture or uh, defensive tourism. Uh, now, these are, are competitive. You have to compete directly against the other civs. Science isn't like that. Science is a first-past-the-post sort of victory type. Um, and so it's often a sort of default. Uh, if you can't do anything else, it'll usually go to science long before it goes to a score victory at the end of the game. Uh, so for both of these reasons, because we have the Legion, we have the Bath with extra amenities, we get gold from our tr internal trade routes, these all push towards, um, these are military advantages. He doesn't really have any direct bonuses to science, but if we're going to be doing science anyway, we might eventually go that way. Um, notice that the, the monuments that you start with will give you extra culture, and that can be an advantage for a cultural victory, but cultural victories are really run, won by uh, tourism, not by culture directly, and he doesn't have any uh, particular advantages to uh, winning a culture victory, producing tourism, and so on. Uh, although he, like I said, he is just a sort of general flexible sieve, so you easily can go for a religious victory or cultural victory cultural victory with Trajan, um, but we're going to focus on his uh, science and military aspects. And we want to keep all of these abilities in mind as we play. So exiting out, we're going to have a look at our map. Now the very first thing we need to do is decide where to settle. So uh, I'm looking right here, and this is a Plains Hill. And it's very useful to settle on Plains Hills because when you settle a city, uh, whatever kind of tile they're on will default to two food and one production with the exception of a Plains Hill, because Plains Hills naturally have one food and two production, and they don't want to make you lose anything. In general, um, aside from clearing you know, woods, say, that we're, we're on right now, um, when you settle a city, uh, the game's not going to take away any yields whenever you settle the city, um, but you will default to the two food that cities always default to. Uh, so when you settle on a Plains Hill, you'll get two food and two production, which gives you an extra production over cities that are uh, ordinarily founded on any other tile, which is just two food and one production. And that one production can be pretty meaningful at the start of a city's existence, and also just especially meaningful in the early game. Later on, um, you might not want to settle on a Plains Hill just uh, to get that bonus. It can be more advantageous to put mines on those hills once you've researched an industrialization, and mines are worth two production each. Um, but at the start, it's very helpful to start on a Plains Hill. We're also starting on a river. This is also advantageous because it gives us access to fresh water, which will increase our housing, and uh, that will allow us to grow more quickly. But before I settle, I like to move out my warrior just to scout around a bit, just to see if there's anything on the horizon. Um, we, got, um, we can see a mountain tile here. We can see three mountains, um, which would make this a, a pretty decent campus spot. Um, but I think uh, there's there's not really any a better spot. We we can also see some tundra down here, um, so we know that we're sort of at the south, and we know that it's not going to be very advantageous to move down there. We're not Russia or Canada or anything, so I think I'm going to settle in place on this Plains Hill. Um, it's a pretty good spot anyway. We have access to wheat. We have access to uh, cattle. We have access to uh, copper resources. All bonus resources. These aren't luxuries, but they will give us increased yields. Uh, at the start of the game, and they'll also enable us to get boosts. We can get a boost to irrigation by farming wheat, we can get a boost to uh, the wheel by mining a resource, including the copper resource, we can get a boost to horseback riding, or, um, yeah, uh, to horseback riding by building a pasture on the cattle. Uh, so these are all great. We're also sort of within range of stone if we want to. Uh, we can 
uh, improve that with a quarry to boost masonry, which is quite strong. Um, gives you access to walls and the battering ram, which will work well with our legion. Uh, so I will settle in place, and I'm looking forward to getting all of these boosts. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to set our uh, tile working. So if you don't know, you can change which tiles your city um, will be working to get these yields. If you enter the Manage Citizens tab, you can see right now we're working one food, two production, two gold. Um, the game sort of prioritizes uh, the, the tiles with the highest yields, regardless of what those yields are. Uh, but generally in the early game, or when you first found cities, you want to prioritize food. You want to get more citizens to be able to work more tiles. You also want to prioritize production. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these, uh, these little buttons here. Right now I'm setting it to prioritize food and production uh, in order to grow the city fast, but also get a high production out. Now, uh, this copper tile is pretty good. It's, it's good to get two production and two gold. But I would like more food right away. You can see right now, our capital is not going to grow for 14 turns, and that's a little slow. So instead, I'm going to uh, manually click this tile with three food, and uh, and now it'll only take five turns to grow. And once we get that, uh, that extra population, we'll be able to work another tile. Um, so after growing for the five turns, we'll actually be able to work that one and this one and be able to grow much faster. Um, so that's what we're going to start with. We're going to start with that three food tile from the cattle. Um, and throughout, we're going to try to manage citizens in the early game. The early game is sort of the most important time to do this. Your early game matters the most for deity. Uh, later on, as we settle more and more cities and have more and more stuff to control, we'll let the citizens just sort of manage themselves. Um, it'll be less crucial, but it definitely helps make your early game uh, much stronger. So the next thing we need to do is we need to pick the, uh, something to build. It's going to take five turns to complete, uh, or to grow in our city, and it's going to take five turns to be able to train a settler. Um, and uh, if if any of these just cost five turns, then it, it might sort of make sense to go for that, just so we could go for an early settler if we wanted, um, especially because of our incentive to settle lots of land as Trajan. Uh, but also a consideration is, uh, you know, we want to explore territory, we want to find good territory. Um, if we built a builder, we wouldn't yet be able to improve many of the tiles. We could improve, We could put farms down on these tiles, but with our first builder, we want to put a farm on the wheat, we want to put a pasture on the cattle, and we want to put a mine on the copper just to get those boosts that I already mentioned. Um, and we won't be able to do that until we research some text. So I'm not going to start with a builder. Then the question is whether to start with a scout, a warrior, or a slinger to help us explore. And because we're playing Rome and we can upgrade our warriors into our very strong legions, I'm going to start with a warrior. Uh, they're a little slower than scouts, but uh, they're much more defensive. And on deity, the, the biggest thing I find in the early game is you don't want to underestimate your AI opponents. They start out with way more resources than you. They start with three cities each. They start with a lot of military and they produce a lot of military. Uh, so I think it's it's always good to be somewhat defensive on deity um, or else you'll get these games where the AI just rushes you. So I'm going to start with the warrior. I, it, this is not what I would do every time, but it, it usually makes sense. Um, so I'm going to go with that. The next thing is to pick a tech. And uh, like I said, we want to get animal husbandry so we can put a pasture down on the cattle. We also want to get mining so we can put a mine down on the copper. And uh, you, could, you could really go either way, but because we're going to do one and then the other, I guess it makes sense to do animal husbandry first because this will give us some information. It'll show us where horses are on the map. And uh, when we put a pasture down on the cattle, it'll give us plus, plus one production. And since that's the, one, that's the tile we're working right now, uh, it makes sense to prioritize that. So we'll go for that, and uh, that's the end of the first turn, and we'll just keep going from here. Uh, one other thing I didn't mention was when we first started the game, if I open up this continent lens by pressing 2, you can see that we're on uh, we're on Zealandia, that's one continent, and there's another continent next to us, Pangaea. Um, and because of this, uh, we, we already started finding a second continent, which gave us the boost to foreign trade. And we might think about um, how that leads us to decide which of these two to pick at the start. 
uh, but we don't really need to decide that yet. First, we have to uh, first we have to research code of laws, um, which notice is only taking five turns or six turns total, including the last one. And uh, that's because we start with three point four culture, which is more than you usually start with. But uh, we get that because we started with a monument, which gets plus one culture and plus one loyalty. But if the city is at maximum loyalty, and our capital is, it always is when you start the game, we're getting plus two culture out of that monument, uh, which is very strong. So we're going to be able to fly through the early civics trees relative to a lot of civs. And this is just, uh, this is one of the reasons I recommend Rome for beginners or for people who are beginning with deity, uh, just because that, that early culture is just so automatic and, uh, and just helps a lot. And, you, and it saves you from having to decide when to build a monument, which can be um, a tough decision to make sometimes. So as far as exploring, I think I'm just going to go here um, just to see what's around in this direction. All right. So we know that there's coast here, there's a mountain there, so we're just going to be swinging up. And generally, I want to have a sort of defensive posture with my warriors as I'm exploring. I want to sort of go in a circle around my capital, just so if a barbarian comes. Barbarians do like to spawn in the tundra because no one's really down there. Um, I want to have my warrior close by to get to my capital if need be. So I'm just going to explore in a circle and try to get a goodie hut whenever I can. And if I find like a city border, um, if it's a city state, I want to go find that city state right away um, to hopefully find them first and get an envoy and get the bonuses in my capital from having an envoy in those city states. If it's uh, an enemy sieve, I'll have to think about it. Um, it could be beneficial to avoid meeting enemy sieves if you can, just because, like I said, they are stronger than you at the start. And if you don't have to worry about them attacking you because they haven't found you, um, that can be pretty beneficial. So we'll go on to the next turn. We'll move our warrior towards that um, goodie hut. And we found a barbarian scout. That's nothing to be afraid of. It's nowhere near our capital. Um, if we get a chance, we'll want to kill it. We'd like to get the boost to bronze working by killing three barbarians. And uh, killing scouts is a good way to get at that. Uh, but if it runs away in another direction, we're not going to pursue it too far. And it did run away. So we'll get this goody hut. We get plus one population in our capital. That's very useful. Um, so be whenever we get our plus one population, we want to uh, check to see what it's working. And here, if we work this copper tile, we'll grow in seven turns and produce in five. If we switch it over to wheat, we can see that we'll grow in five turns and produce in six. Uh, there's not much of a difference here. So I think I'll go with the copper tile because that'll also give us gold and that will be useful as well. Um, we started out with plus 5.3 gold and now we're getting plus 7.3, which makes a pretty big difference in the early game. So we'll keep exploring with this warrior. We found a barbarian encampment and uh, generally in the early game, since you can get the boost of bronze working by killing encampments and you can get a boost to military tradition by clearing a barbarian outpost, um, if I find one with my warrior, I want to take it out. So I'm going to spend some time and try to take out this barbarian encampment. So I'm going to move right next to it. That was also useful because we found Granada. Now, we were not the first to meet them, so we didn't get an envoy. We didn't get a, uh, a boost in our city to production when producing units, which would be useful. Uh, but we, we will probably go for an early encampment, so we will probably get an envoy in Granada soon enough. Uh, it will also... Granada will all city-states like clearing and barbarian encampments that are nearby. You can see that they've already sent a warrior. So they're going to be helping us out. And the main thing is we just want to wait until we can kill the, the barbarian in one attack so that we can get that encampment, we can get the boost to military tradition, and we can get the, the bonus gold from it. Okay, so if you uh, click your warrior and you hover over the encampment, you can see that uh, we would not attack it, and who knows, you know, maybe maybe this warrior here from the city-state could take it on the next turn uh, if we attacked it now. So we're actually just going to wait. We're going to fortify up and defend um, and just bide our time. We're also waiting for Code of Laws. Okay. We met Montezuma. Um... I want to keep the AI nice, again, because they're strong with us. Uh, Montezuma is a pretty strong enemy in the uh, beginning of the game because of his eagle warriors, which are quite strong. Um, so we want to keep him nice at the beginning. We don't want to uh, 
piss him off and we don't want to have him declare war on us. So I'm going to be diplomatic. I'm going to say it's an honor to meet him. Um, and I will also offer to uh, show him where our nearest city is. Um, and we also can see where his capital is. But authority that makes a law. Because it was uh, the nearest city to us. Now, uh, we just got Code of Laws, which is great. Um, especially because we want to clear that Barbarian encampment. So we're going to put in Discipline, plus 5 unit combat strength with fighting Barbarians, which will help us out. And uh, I'm going to put in God King for plus 1 Faith and plus 1 Gold in the capital, because I want that Faith to generate a Pantheon early on. We don't know what Pantheons will be available by the time we unlock one, um, but with this plus 1 Faith, uh, which we need because we don't have any other sources of Faith coming in, uh, we will be able to get a Pantheon in uh, 25 turns. You need 25 Faith to get a Pantheon. So that's what we'll start with. And uh, by meeting the Aztecs, we got a boost to writing, which is useful. Um, so as you can see, we won't quite clear it uh, if we attack the Barbarians now. So we will wait to see if uh, maybe the Aztecs hit it first. Um, now we have to choose a Civic. And I think we will... Uh, just go with foreign trade because we've already boosted it. Uh, we will want a builder uh, to improve three tiles for craftsmanship soon, but uh, I think we'll just start with foreign trade here. And uh, we'll keep our warrior in a defensive position and go to the next turn. All right, the Aztecs did not attack it. Um, we'll wait and see what happens. Um, why don't we move up here just to get a little bit of extra sight while we wait to see what happens to the Barbarian encampment. Uh, the thing is, is, it just won't benefit us at all to attack it now, so we want to wait um, to have the opportunity to attack it when it will actually give us something for our efforts. And on to the next turn. Alright, still no attack just yet. It looks like all the uh, AIs around us are um, ready to swoop just like we are, but we'll stay fortified. And uh, now I think I'll send this warrior south, because we sent the last one sort of northish. And uh, now we have to decide what else to build. Because I can get all these boosts, I can improve these three tiles around us um, in fairly short order. I think I'm going to start with a builder right after this. I'd like to get those boosts right away. Um, so that's what we'll build next. And the Aztecs did manage to take it. I am fond of pigs. Uh, which is... You know, it'd be better if we took it, but it's not a it's not a huge loss. So uh, then I'll just keep exploring with this warrior, and uh, I'll try to get that goody hut. We also met Kabul, um, but we also weren't the first to meet them. They want us to construct a campus for an envoy, and having these two militaristic city states next to us is really good because my goal after improving the resources around us is to go straight for iron working, get our legions up, and. Uh, you know, go go to attack our neighbors. And having these militaristic city-states, if we have envoys in them, it'll really help us get our units out faster. Um, they're also good to get envoys with because they give you bonuses to unit production in general, not just military units, but settlers and builders as well. Um, so we would like to have envoys in order to get settlers and builders out much faster too. Uh, now we have to pick a tech, and we will pick mining. Uh, mining will be ready... Uh, just as, about the same time that we get our builder out, and then we can improve that. We also uh, found that we have horses next to us. That's great, um, because we can uh, put a pasture on that and start getting horses to have horsemen, which are also quite strong. Uh, our ability to make legions will be limited by our ability to uh, gather iron. Uh, and so if we run out of iron... Having horses as a backup to make horsemen will be quite useful. And I'll keep exploring with this warrior. We found a goody hut down here. That's another reason to explore the tundra. In addition to barbarians, uh, you can also often find some lost uh, tribal villages down in the tundra. And our city will grow on the next turn. Okay, we found a barbarian scout next to us. Uh, so we want to get our warrior back up in a defensive position, but first we do want this tribal village. And we found a relic, which is great. That'll give us faith and a little bit of tourism, which isn't uh, anything we need right now. But the faith will help us get a pantheon much faster. And we'll keep moving this warrior around and try to get that one in a defensive position as well. 
Um, one thing I, I didn't do that I should have done was send a delegation to uh, Montezuma as soon as I met him. Uh, I just kind of forgot, uh, but it would have been good to do that. It also would have been good to um, give him a deal, uh, if possible, uh, right away, because the AI become more friendly with you when they make deals. Um, it would have been great, especially because, again, uh, we want to keep the our, our nearest neighbors happy, especially when they have strong early advantages. Um, so we messed that up a little bit, but we can roll with it. Uh, it won't be a huge loss, and uh, hopefully we'll get our legions up in time to prevent any Aztec aggression. They're also not super close to us, um, so uh, hopefully we won't see any Eagle Warriors coming en masse our way. Uh, our capital just grew, so let's enter citizen management. Um, you can see we have another three food tile that we could work, and uh, in eight turns we'll get border growth to the horses, which is good. Um, another advantage of having extra culture from monuments is that our cities will grow faster um, in terms of their uh, area, so they'll they'll acquire new tiles faster. So now the question is whether we want to work um, this wheat tile uh, or this three food, and I think the answer is clear. Right now we're getting uh, we won't grow for another 16 turns, but if we work the three food, uh, we'll grow in 11 turns. And we might also want to switch off of the copper. Um, it served us well before, but uh, in the early game, I, I really do want to have a high population. I want to get up to my population limit um, where food becomes less useful. So I think I'll work the two food and just grow in eight turns, which only takes off uh, one turn, only adds one turn to the uh, builder. Um, from what we had right now working the two three food tiles um, and now we'll grow in eight turns and uh, in eight turns we'll be able to walk, work that copper as well although we'll probably want to work the horses instead so I will prioritize food at the beginning uh, once you get close to your housing limit the food becomes less efficient so I might switch away and, and focus on production at that point but for now food's the name in the game and the scout is running down this way, so that gives us some indication of where the camp is. We want to move our build our uh, warrior up in that direction, uh, hopefully to intercept it, and we will move our this warrior across the river to keep exploring. It looks like there is some more mountains here. Um, okay, the scout is right here, so we'll move on to the marsh to try to block it. Uh, we'll move this warrior down. We want to see if we can get through this way. Um, this would be a great campus spot if we can settle nearby, uh, but it's possible that Kabul will take that before we can get there. We'll find out. That's All right. Positive aspect of trade, I suppose. The warrior, the scout is moving down this way, so we'll want to keep following it, try to cut it off, and we'll move this warrior there. It, there is a pass, so we will bring this warrior down and sort of explore in this direction. And now we have to choose a civic. Uh, do we want to go for early empire or do we want to go for craftsmanship? Well, I think we'll start with craftsmanship. And uh, because we know that we're going to get the boost pretty soon, we'll just research this enough to where the boost will top us off and research the, the civic. But that'll be um, good because this will give us uh, two cards that we can use to get production towards builders or, more importantly, a goge to get uh, plus 50% production toward ancient and classical era melee, anti-cavalry, and ranged units, including our legions and including archers. All right, so the scout ran in the other direction, so let's just uh, try to keep an eye on him, try to keep him from going back to the other camp, and then uh, hopefully find out where that camp is. All right, we still want to try to cut off the scout, so we'll keep moving closer to it. And we'll uh, explore with this warrior. Montezuma is happy with us because we don't have any luxuries he doesn't. Um, and that's a good thing. So you can see, oh, we found another. You find yourself in a hole. Quit digging. We found another military city-state. Uh, this one's a good one. I like Valletta, if you have faith. Um, uh, the suzerainty lets you buy city center and encampment buildings with faith, which is really nice, even though we're not really going for a faith game or a religious game. Uh, but we were the first to meet Valletta, so we do have an envoy with them, so they are speeding up production of units, which is very helpful. If we send them a trade route, we'll get a second envoy, which we'll probably want to do. Okay, the scout crossed the river. 
So we'll keep following it and we'll try to cross the river um, after this turn, after we explore a little bit. Um, so it's really great that we found Valletta. We also researched mining, um, so we'll be able to improve that copper in no time. And uh, we can get our Pantheon now. Oh yeah, to, uh, to finish talking about Montezuma. It's just that his leader agenda says that he doesn't want to have... He doesn't want other civs to have luxuries that he doesn't have. If we had any luxury resources, we'd want to trade them to him just to uh, make him happy with the trade and also keep him from disliking us uh, because we have luxuries that he doesn't. Uh, we don't have any luxuries around us, so that's not really a problem. But right now, he's kind of happy with us. Let's see if we can declare a friendship. And we can. So we didn't even need to send him a delegation. That would cost 25 gold. Um, He's just happy that we don't have any luxuries he doesn't, so he's willing to be our friend. And the main reason we want to be his friend is because that means we now have 30 turns where he can't attack us. You can't attack declared friends until the friendship ends in 30 turns. Um, so, now let's look at our Pantheon, see what we can get. I'm going to scroll down and look for religious settlements. When chosen, receive a settler in your capital. Border expansion rate is 15% faster. Um, I think this is kind of a no-brainer with Rome. We want to settle. We want. Uh, we already get a bonus because of our free monuments to uh, border expansion, and this will just help that bonus by making it 50% faster. And the free settler is just really amazing in the early game. So, uh, I'm not even really going to bother looking at the other ones. It could be good to get God of the Forge to produce legions faster, but I think that extra city in the early game is just so useful that I'm, I'm just going to go straight for religious settlements. The first prophet has a flash of insight beneath the starry sky and bows in thanksgiving to unseen gods. We're the first to get a pantheon, so we got to choose from all of them. Um, which is why we got that one, because the AI tend to like to pick that one too. Okay, so things are going pretty well for us. We have a relic. We got uh, the best pantheon we could probably get. And uh, so we do have a friendship with Montezuma, so we don't have to worry too much about him attacking us right away. Uh, now we have to decide where to settle. I would like to settle closer to Montezuma. Um, sometimes the AI find that threatening, and will uh, they're more likely to attack you if you settle closely to them. But he is our friend. And what we can do is we can settle on this incense, which will then give us a free copy of the incense. Uh, we'll also ha have this uh, three mountain campus spot, which will be pretty convenient, or this one. Um, we could settle on the incense, give us a free copy, then we can sell it to him, thus keeping him happy with his agenda and making him happy that we made a deal. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to do right away. And uh, so I'll settle on that incense. And I am sending an unescorted settler, but uh, it doesn't really look like... There's no barbarian encampment around, and uh, we only have city-states in our one friend, so I'm not, I'm not too worried about that settler getting captured or anything. Uh, finally, we have to pick a tech, and uh, I already said that I wanted to go straight for uh, legions if I can, so I will research bronze working next, and hopefully we can kill uh, some barbarians uh, to get the boost for that. On to the next turn. All right, we're working this tile with the, the cattle, so we want our builder to improve that one first, and we'll get one production and half, half a housing for that, which is excellent. We also just got a boost. Uh, the next thing I want to build is... Uh, I probably would want to build a settler, but we just got a free one, so I'll make use of that. Uh, I would like a trader, and uh, then I could send a trader to get an envoy with the Letta. Um, but I think I will start with a Slinger, just because the Slinger will help us kill Barbarians, and if we kill a unit with a Slinger, we'll get a boost to Archery, which is something that I want to do as well. So I'll get that Slinger out and help us explore a little bit. Um, the one thing is if we want to send a trade route to Valletta, we have to get Sight to Valletta. Um, so we'll explore this territory with our Warrior. We just got Sight to them in one go, so that's useful. Uh, we want to keep following that Scout to see where it's headed. Uh, hopefully it leads us to more Barbarians to kill. Uh, it didn't, so I'm going to cross over and keep chasing that scout. I want to move this warrior down to try to pincer the scout, catch it between us. Um, so, our border's expanded. We got an extra population. Uh, this horse tile, this 2-2 two -two tile, is very good. So, I think we will try to improve that right away. And we don't have to get the boost to irrigation right away, so... Uh, I'll probably work that one instead of the wheat. I'll, I'll improve that one instead of the wheat, and I'll still improve um, the copper for the boost to the wheel. Uh, in terms of what we want to work right now, we definitely want to work 
uh, these two pasture tiles and the three food tile. Uh, but we might want to switch over to uh, the uh, copper tile because we're about to improve it. Uh, so I think that's what we'll do for now. And, uh, you know, actually, for right now, that won't make a difference to how quickly we get the slinger out. So I'll keep working the, the two food tile that we have on the wheat. Um, once I improve that mine, it'll be more useful to us. Which I'll do presently on the next turn. Let's watch the scout, see where it goes. It crossed over again. Um, so let's just try crossing over, keep it moving back and forth. We found Fez, and we were the first to found Fez. We'll get extra science on our capital. That's very useful. Very good to have all these city-states around us. So we will improve this with the mine. And now if we go into citizen management, we can see um, it still would only take two turns to build a slinger. Um, so I think I'll just keep a little bit of extra growth while we can. Uh, here, actually... Yeah, so we'll keep a little bit of extra growth, but uh, as soon as we switch to something else besides the Slinger, we'll probably want to um, work that tile instead. Uh, and the last thing we'll do is improve this uh, this horse tile. Um, we caught this in time, so we, we put some amount of culture into craftsmanship, but we'll get the boost to it on the next turn, so we want to switch over to um, something. And in, in the early game, um, we, we want to go for political philosophy as soon as possible. Um, so... Uh, we'll we'll put this into early empire next, and the early empire is also good because it gives us the card colonization, so we can get fifty percent production towards settlers. We'll also get a governor title and the ability to have open borders, um, which we can then sell to the AI uh, for gold and to make them friendlier towards us. And we will settle on that incense. Uh, we found a goody hut over here to our west. We found it Ostia on Pangea, so we got some error score for that. Now, just to keep Montezuma happy and to get some gold, I'm immediately going to sell that uh, incense for as much gold per turn as I can get. He'll give us five gold per turn and one gold, which is great. Um, and it will keep him happy, which is exactly what I want right now. Uh, we have another monument in this city, so now we get more culture, and now we have to decide what to build. And I think I will go for... Um, a warrior, uh, just to have that extra defense, and I'll use the warrior to get that goody hut. If the Aztecs don't take it first, it looks like they probably will. Um, but that's uh, a good thing to get right now. And we still want to pincer this scout, so I will move this warrior there, and move this warrior there. And I will improve the horses to get the boost to craftsmanship. Inspiration. Is a mere reed. Uh, we can take out God King and put in uh, urban planning for plus one production in all cities. Uh, we, I think we'll... No, we'll take out Discipline, the plus five bonus against Barbarians, because we still haven't found them, uh, found their camp yet, and we'll be able to take out the uh, Scout without it. And instead, put in a Goge, since we are building a builder in our other city. Um, so that's what we'll do for right now. Now that we've boosted craftsmanship, do we want to switch over to state workforce? Um, and I say no. Uh, I'd like to get early empire for that colonization card. And the boost to um, state workforce is to build any specialty district, uh, which I plan to do with an encampment. But it will take us a few turns to get there. Um, and we will get the boost to early empire much sooner. So I'll go on to the... I, I, I should do citizen management of Ostia, by the way. I'm going to set it automatically to food and production again. Um, but there aren't very many great tiles here, so we're just defaulting to a one food, two production tile. It's not great. We'll, we won't grow for 15 turns, but it's the best we can do for right now. And the Barbarian Encampment spawned uh, just to our northeast. Uh, I will move the Slinger in that direction to hopefully get a kill with it. And I will also uh, attack the scout with this warrior, just because I can, and move that warrior up to block as well. And now I think I would like to get a traitor in the capital. Uh, we just finished that slinger, so now we want to check out uh, our, our citizen management. If we uh, move to the copper tile instead of the wheat, we will finish the traitor in three turns instead of four. Um, it'll take three turns to grow in population, but I'm willing to do that. 
uh, the extra production in gold will help us out. We also have a fair bit of gold up here, as you can see. Um, if there were something I wanted to buy right away, uh, I would, I might, but in other cases, I'll just save it to buy a tile if I need it, or um, for Rome, especially to save gold so that I could upgrade my warriors into legions as soon as possible. And someone built the Great Bath, that's okay. Um, I would like to move one of these warriors up to clear out this barbarian encampment. Uh, I think I will uh, fortify this warrior just to get a defensive bonus against this warrior. Hopefully it does attack us, but I'll move this warrior up to clear out this one, and I'll move my slinger over as well. Uh, I'll get rid of the Great Bath notification and the barbarian notification, and we will go to the next turn. All right, so we'll stay defended against this Barbarian. Hopefully it just attacks us until we can kill it. And uh, I'm just gonna leave this Slinger here for now. Uh, I w once we hit, it, hit this uh, Spearman a few times with our Warrior, then we'll move the Slinger in to try to get the kill. And Stonehenge has been built. Uh, now I can kill this Warrior, so I will do so. And now the question is whether we send our trade route to Ostia, or move it to Ostia and send it to Rome. I want to get the envoy with Valletta, so I'm just going to send it there and get three gold and that envoy. And we have a warrior on the way, so we know that we're not in danger of it being pillaged. Uh, I will now uh, attack. And the next thing we can do is train another settler. That seems like the, the next good option. Or we could build a builder first um, to improve these wheat tiles, put some farms down, get a lot of food. Um, it's a tough call. Uh, I guess I'll wait to... I'll do a builder first because we'll get the card to colonization soon, which will help us um, pump out settlers faster. And uh, I, I will prioritize food right now, I think, just because I want the city to grow in order to get the boost to early empire. Yeah, so we'll prioritize food right now. His delegation is welcome. He's quite pleased with us. I will heal up this warrior, and uh, I'll heal up this warrior. Uh, it looks like Valletta will be attacking this Barbarian encampment, so I want to put my Slinger in a position where I can easily move and attack uh, the encampment if I need to. So I'll move uh, my Slinger right there, and I'll just heal my Warrior again. Keep healing this Warrior as well. Uh, if we get the boost to Early Empire at this point, we should get it, so I'm just going to switch over to State Workforce now. And we have one turn left on this. Uh, we would like to get this two food and one production here just to grow a little bit faster in Ostia. Okay, we can't quite get the kill on uh, this Spearman with our Slinger, but we can at least um, do a little bit. Uh, we do want this encampment for the gold. And uh, we do want to protect our trade route. Unfortunately, we can't um, get to it. Uh, so hopefully it doesn't get pillaged, but we'll find out. If it does, we already got the envoy um, to Valletta, so it won't be a huge loss. We could just buy or rebuild another trader. Um, but we will hit the Spearman with the Slinger once. Um, I could have hit it with the Warrior, uh, but... I was worried that it would kill it. Maybe I should have done that first, actually, come to think of it. Um, with this warrior, I'll just explore out west a little bit. And uh, at this point, I could go for a scout, try to get a scout out to really look at the land. Um, I could go for another builder, but I think I'll just, I just want to play defensive. So I think I'll get another slinger, which we can upgrade to an archer. Hopefully the spearman... Oh good, our trader moved before the Spearman did. Hopefully the Spearman does exactly that and suicides onto our Slinger, giving us the boost. Uh, that couldn't have gone better. 
Um, now I'll kill this uh, scout with this slinger as well for bronze working. Wine of the mind. Wine of the mind. We got the um, the boost and the tech to bronze working. Uh, now we can put down an encampment uh, if we have a tile for it. Uh, the question is, where do we want to build an encampment? And uh, it doesn't really matter. It just it can't be adjacent to our city center. Um, I guess we could just put it down here. Um, we this might be a good spot for it, but for now we can just keep that woods on it, so we can chop the woods down later. That might be a good thing to do. Although that that is a really nice defensive sort of position for the encampment. Uh, of course, that is a, a four mountain spot, so that'd be good for um, a campus right there. Uh, unfortunately, that campus wouldn't benefit from putting the encampment there because uh, you can only get plus one adjacency from two districts, not from the just the one, and we can't put any districts on top of the horses. So I think we'll save those woods, and I think we will build the encampment uh, over here somewhere. We're going to have lots of farms and lots of food available, so um, I don't mind killing that uh, that grassland tile, which would otherwise be a, a good farm spot. Uh, so I will purchase that tile and put down the encampment. But I'll switch back to finish the builder before we build that. And uh, next, I want to go for iron working to get the legion right away. Uh, now, we can now see iron on the map, but it doesn't look like there's any around us, which is far from ideal. Um, we'd like to keep exploring. Hopefully we find some before too long and we can settle on it or near it. Um, we'll just have to keep exploring every direction we can to look for iron. Um, if we don't find it, that's tough. If we had uh, set the game to balanced instead of standard start, we would have been guaranteed iron and horses. Um, so that might have been a thing to do. If you're playing Rome, you might want to set the game to balanced. Um, but we're just going to roll with the punches here and move on to the next turn. We will improve that wheat for the boost to irrigation. And uh, we built the builder, so now we will build our encampment. We want to get an early encampment so that we can get early great general points to try to get this first great general, general who is coincidentally Hannibal Barca, one of our enemies, and um, a Carthaginian. Uh, but if we can get him, he'll be our great general instead. Uh, we will move this warrior there. And this warrior there. The slinger will move back and just uh, heal up. And I think we'll get the uh, garrison promotion just because we're, we are on that encampment, which will be built in no time. Look back over the past with its changing empires that rose and fell. You can foresee the future too. All right, I just uh, improved those two wheat tiles. Uh, we grew, so now we have a total of six population, which gave us the boost to early empire. Uh, we're still working on state workforce. Uh, do we want to put any different cards in? Um, we're still, we want to finish the encampment. That'll take five turns. It'll be, uh, we'll get the boost to state workforce uh, by finishing that in five turns. So we'll switch away from state workforce at some point. Um, yeah, and then as, as soon as we get it, we'll be able to put in the card for colonization. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll just leave these in for now and uh, and switch over later. Um, we can explore with this slinger a little bit. These city-states aren't going to attack us, and we can explore with this one. We'll, we'll just heal up, uh, and we'll go to the, this hill to look for some iron. Still haven't found any. That's unfortunate. Uh, we'll keep exploring this way. Uh, we could go here, but we know we're probably not going to settle there, so I'll just move this warrior up. Uh, is that up? No, okay. We are looking for iron. Maybe Valletta? 
has some, oh we can't see any so probably not um we would really like iron if only this was hatusa we could get iron from hatusa but um yeah I'll keep exploring this way we found some citrus but not iron and we will move this warrior down to explore the tundra to our south. Uh, what do we want to do with this builder? Uh, we could build more farms, but we don't really need them over here. I'm going to send this builder over to Ostia to improve that weed tile instead. Uh, let's check out what we are working here. Uh, we are working all good tiles. Uh, we could get this wheat with three food and one production instead of that marsh for three food. Um, so this seems to be a really good setup here. And uh, we do have a couple of eagle warriors on our borders. Fortunately, we are friends, so we know he's not going to attack us for at least 14 turns. But we might want to keep some military on hand um, just to stay safe uh, when that ends. Right now we're building a slinger, um, which is good. And we want to uh, go up and improve that wheat tile. Uh, we'll keep exploring with this slinger. And with this warrior, we found a goodie hut. And with this warrior, we found a barbarian encampment. We found Carthage. And again, in the early game, I want to keep everyone happy, so I'll offer to show them our nearby city. And this time, I won't forget, I will send a, de a delegation. Hmm. And uh, we do have the ability to trade open borders, so I will offer to trade. It'll take us one gold per turn, um, but I'm willing to do that just to make her happy. Um, in fact, actually, I don't really care about her open borders, so I think I'll just sell her ours for one gold. And that should still make her like us. Hmm. Hmm. Um, we can also sell open borders to... Uh, our friend for three gold per turn. That's pretty good. And I'll keep exploring with the slinger. We'll get this goodie hut. That gave us the boost to state workforce. Uh, which we didn't really need, but I'll take it. And still no iron, it looks like, which is unfortunate. Uh, we will move over onto this uh, woods hill in order to take out that barbarian encampment. Uh, we have to pick a civic. We will go for political philosophy. Uh, and we have a governor to appoint. So, uh, for me right now, I feel like there are sort of two choices of governors. Well, we could get a Mani if we uh, wanted to uh, get any of these city-states in particular. Um, Kabul would give us double experience for battles we initiate, which could be strong. Um, and uh, maybe if we if we had Hatusa and we needed to get iron from them, Amani would be strong. But right now, I think there's there's two main choices. There's Pingala um, to get extra science and culture, and there's Magnus in order to get uh, plus yields from plot harvests um, and re uh, removals of features. And more importantly, his provision promotion, which makes settlers trained in the city not consume population. And because we're Rome and we're going to be settling a lot, I think I'm going to go straight for Pingala. Put him in Rome because we want to put Silders, uh, build settlers there. And we can promote him to his provision promotion right away uh, because we got two titles from two different civics. Um, I will put in the uh, settler card, colonization, and I'll leave in a goge for military production. So we'll have one city building settlers and one city building military units for the time being. And we'll keep exploring with this warrior. Still no sight of iron. Still disappointed. But we'll move on to the next turn. And uh, Dido's not super happy with us even though we did give her open borders and send her a delegation. Uh, but that's okay. Rapa Nui. We can decide if we want to build a government plaza. 
or where we want to build it. Um, I think we'll want to keep building military units in this city just because this is our closest city to our nearest neighbor. Um, I'm not sure exactly where I want to put the government plaza just yet. Uh, we could put it somewhere in Rome because we want to get, once we research political philosophy and get a government, we can build the um, ancestral hall in it, which will increase settlers uh, production in the capital and give us builders whenever we put down new cities. Um, so I think we'll probably want that in the capital where we have fairly high production for right now. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll build a spearman over here. Um, because I would build a warrior because we could upgrade them to our um, legions, but we won't be able to do that without iron, unfortunately. Um, another advantage of picking Magnus first is if we get another promotion by putting down our government plaza, we can go straight for Black Marketeer, which makes strategic resource, resource costs for units um, discounted by 80%, which is quite a bit. Um, so if we do find iron anywhere, just like any source, um, then we will be able to create legions wherever Magnus is much more cheaply. Let's see if uh, anyone else has found iron just yet. And uh, I will buy Montezuma's open borders because we are right next to him and we can explore that way. Um, he hasn't found any iron, neither has Dido. Um, so at least we're not the only ones, but we really need it more than, more than they do. Um, we will keep exploring with this slinger and with this warrior. Let's just heal him up for now. Uh, I will sell her my horses just because I'm not using them right now. Okay. Um, you know, I did think of a better use for this builder instead of just helping out Ostia, which we do want to do, um, but isn't super crucial right away. Um, I think I'm going to send this builder over to um, improve this stone and build a quarry on it uh, so that we can get the boost to masonry. Uh, so I'm going to buy it right now. We have lots of gold. Um, oops, that one. 95 gold. Uh, I think it's worth it to get that extra... Um, that extra, what's it called? Science, uh, from the boost. Blank there for a minute. Uh, we do want to put down the government plaza. Generally, you want to put this down in a high production city because its buildings later on can be kind of expensive in production. Um, you also want to put it in such a way that you can surround it by um, other districts that get adjacency bonuses. The encampment does not get an adjacency bonus. Um, nevertheless, it might make sense to put it there or there just so we can build other things around it. Um, I think I will put it here. Uh, then we could build like an industrial zone, and a bath uh, there, industrial zone for adjacency. Um, or a commercial hub, and we could put, I don't know, a campus here or something. Um, so I will just put it there, uh, just for simplicity's sake. Uh, but I won't build it right away because, uh, aside from the extra governor title, it won't really do anything for us right away. So instead, I'm just going to start building uh, settlers using the colonization card, and uh, I'll just uh, fortify the slinger. Oh, we did find some iron, uh, but there's no way to settle near it. Um, the only good news is we are friendly with uh, Montezuma, and Montezuma will get access to it, and then maybe we can trade for it. The only thing is, once we go to war with Montezuma, he's not going to want to give us any more, but as long as we can trade for some at the start, um, we should be able to build enough legions to take down Montezuma, and then we will have a source of iron. Okay, this uh, encampment is spawning a warrior, so I'm just going to fortify right now. So if it attacks us, uh, we'll lose much less health than it will. And I'll keep exploring with the slinger. Uh, we're in between two city-states there. There's a, there's a decent spot to settle on the coast over here. Um, we'll also, we can settle in this very fertile area down here. Uh, the first thing we want to do is settle up here um, for another city close to Montezuma, and in fact, I think we want to put an encampment 
there on the desert since uh, there's not much other use for it and we want to settle there. That's great. Both of them attacked us, but we lost hardly any health because we were fortified. We also get a promotion, so I'll get the Battle Cry promotion on that warrior. Uh, I'll move the Slinger down to keep exploring. This one's healing. Uh, this one's just fortified. I'm going to move into Montezuma's territory just to explore a little bit. Uh, hopefully Texcoco uh, takes that tile soon and he improves it so we can start trading for iron. And uh, first I will take the outpost and then I will attack the warrior. Or rather the warrior will probably just attack me. Still exploring. Um, we can start exploring this direction. Looks like there might be coast over here. Yeah, there we go. So now I'll move this warrior out and up. And we did find coast in that direction. Uh, I'll just keep exploring Montezuma's lands. I don't even know where Dido is. Oh, Montezuma does have a big military. And uh, we're only friends with him for seven more turns. So hopefully we can get ours going. Um, I'm going to pull back this warrior for a defensive position around Ostia, just in case. Uh, we did finally find some iron over here. Uh, it's very questionable if we'll get to it before Kabul can, but uh, I will try to get a settler out right away to settle on the coast and then try to buy up that tile. Uh, I do want to move you back, but for now, we'll leave you there. Uh, I don't like this. Um, so, because we won't actually be able to build legions until we get some iron, I'm going to turn away from ironworking now that we do that, and I want to get archery so that we can upgrade our slingers to archers, which will help us a lot against Montezuma, just in case. And uh, I think I'll just pull this warrior back as well for a defensive posture. And we'll improve that stone for a quarry. Uh, I think... I think I'll just pull back this slinger as well. We don't really need to explore the tundra right now. And it looks like Fez is going to go take care of that barbarian. Um, so I do want to ensure that I get this spot before Montezuma does. So I'm going to settle this one first. And then I'll send a settler uh, to settle this coast. Uh, but I want to build that right away. Six turns. And uh, let's just double check what we're working here. Uh, we are growing in six turns. That's great. Uh, I would like more production, though. So I'm going to change one of these wheat tiles over to that 2-3. Uh, and now we can get a settler out in five turns, which is fantastic. Um, and notice, because of our promoted Magnus, we did not lose a population in Rome, which is excellent as well. Uh, we're going to be sending out a lot of settlers from Rome. So it's, it's great that we won't be losing any population. Uh, I'll move you over. There is a little mountain pass. Hopefully Kabul doesn't expand. I'm not going to send them an envoy right away. Um, if they if they do expand, that probably is where they'll take first. Um, so hopefully we'll have a chance to get it instead. Uh, I will send this warrior up. And this warrior down. Just to put them in a defensive posture around Ostia. In fact, this one I'll just leave here. Uh, this one I'll move over. This one I'll move up. Move the slinger over. I'll explore a little bit and then move back that way. Uh, move him into the city and then I'll heal up there. And I'll just fortify this warrior. And uh, I'll bring this warrior down. Your delegation is welcome. That's 25 gold in our pocket. Politics is the art of the possible, the attainable. The... Uh, I will move this builder down just to 
get on that spot. Um, hopefully, he doesn't move his Eagle Warriors there. And I'll heal up in the city. Uh, our next Civic. Uh, I think we'd like Military Tradition. Now that we have a government, we can uh, put in the card for uh, the Stratagos card, my namesake. Uh, to get plus two great general points per turn, which is excellent. Uh, for our new government, it's not like we're building wonders, so I think we'll just put in oligarchy, which is a nice all-around selection of cards, and also gives uh, plus 20% unit experience and plus four combat strength to melee, anti-cav, and naval melee. So that's going to be great with our legions. I think we'll just go for that. Uh, we do want the settler card. We want a goge. Uh, we're not expending any money on unit maintenance at this point, so we won't put in that card. We do want Charismatic Leader, um, just to get uh, influence points for more envoys. And uh, there's nothing else that we're really going for right now. So I think I'll just put in Urban Planning, and we'll switch that over to Stratagos once we get that card. But that uh, speeds up our production in these cities. Uh, I think I will build uh, or buy a builder in Ostia. Just to help it grow a little faster and produce a little faster that way. Just because we have the cash to spend, um, but we're not currently getting any bonuses to production of builders. And uh, I'll just leave you where you are, leave you where you are, move you over, and go to the next turn, uh, which will be the end of the Ancient Era. We didn't quite get a uh, Golden Age for the Classical Era, which is fine. I shot an arrow um, into the air. Hopefully, fell to earth. hopefully we'll be able to get one uh, for the Medieval Era, because um, a lot of our stuff will come online in the Classical Era. Uh, but uh, I'm going to call it there for today. Thank you for watching. If you liked, please like and subscribe. If you have comments or questions, please leave a comment, and I'll try to address them all in the next video or with comments on the page. Um, I'm Stratagos. This is for Accelerator. Uh, hope to see you next time, and uh, goodbye. Take care.